Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. This is more of a part two episode of the last episode, which is basically our road uh, to and from Kansas. Last episode, we had uh, Cody and Adam from the RVA Returners join us. Um, today, uh, I, I'm Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. So we're back to our our, our normal uh, our normal podcast. Um, <clears throat> I think this episode we were going to talk more about the in depth the 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 personal side of Kansas, right? Uh, mm-hmm, right. Because for both of us, there's a lot of a uh, there's a lot of memories going into it. There's a lot of reasons that Kansas was able to happen the way it did, um, and so this this podcast will probably be a little less of the the the, the deck list, the the small choices. Although I'm sure we'll we'll delve into that as well. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit because I mean we played the same deck, <clears throat> so we both had to have kind of the same mindset going into it. Yeah. Uh, but also we had you know similar experiences, right? So yeah. like you said, the more personal end, we stayed with Jake Lee, which if it weren't for him and Rebecca, I. Pr- we probably would not have went, right? Like, yeah, I don't think we could have afforded to go. To go. Yeah, yeah it would just... it's insane. So, beyond appreciative for those two. So yeah, so let's let's start with that. Um, the 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 road to Kansas actually started back in uh, we I think like December last Something of last like that, year, yeah. Uh, yeah. where um, Jake actually reached out to us and kind of was like, "Hey man, like I, I, I love you guys' podcast. I love what you guys are doing." Can I can I be on there and kind of promote the Petite Cup coming up? <clears throat> and we were just right, like, right. "Heck yeah, let's let's just do that." Um, we had him on like a speaker phone for the podcast too, and it picked it up. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Out, it worked out really well actually compared to what I thought mm-hmm. it was going to work out. Um, and, right. and during that podcast, he just randomly said like, "Hey, if you guys end up wanting to come, you guys can crash at my place." And we're and like, we're like, oh, <clears throat> well, well <laughs> we weren't considering going um, just because it was just financially not viable at the time. But you know, with right. with that with that little caveat then that that did it, that made it definitely more possible and so exactly. we did we uh we flew to kansas um we we did fairly well in kansas i think that that event had 42 people right <clears throat> something like that it was somewhere in that ballpark for sure yeah um uh zach and i were very close to meeting in the finals <laughs> <laughs> um, yes we 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 had very similar stories too we had we were very much afraid of our top eight matches in Kansas, mm-hmm. um, I, I was playing against Devin Shea um, and this Mono Wind. He was my one of my losses in the Swiss, and it wasn't a close game. He annihilated me in the Swiss. <clears throat> right, right. And then, and then Zach again, was up against like Lopez, just... who was one of the. Oh, yeah. Zach was up against Lopez, who was one of the best players um, out of the Kansas uh, City area, uh, mm-hmm. and he was on Mono Ice. Um, so we were pretty nervous about that. Um, but I, I, you, you end up winning your top eight match, right? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a weird back and forth game. We both made some mistakes here and there and people have talked about it. Yeah. That, now. that one was um, on stream. Um, yep, that, I, I battled Devin, match. I battled Devin off stream. Um, Devin, by the way, was one of the people who showed up at this, uh, crystal cup, put together, help put together all of our top 16 matches out of their cards to help us yep. grind and test. So thanks, Devin. We really appreciate you. Um, yep. Yeah. So anyway, so that we, we, we the Choker Bros took home first place at that Petit Cup, which was super cool. Um, mm-hmm. Got to play against Ben in the finals, um, which was awesome. We'll definitely be re- revisiting this story here in a minute. Um, <laughs> and then we flew back home. <clears throat> and uh, we, could, we couldn't have done that without Jake and Rebecca. It was awesome. Um, and since then, we've kept in contact. Yeah. And uh, when we found out there was going to be a local one there, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> had to figure out a way to go. Uh, first, obviously, um, we talked about in previous podcasts, we had planned on going to Gen Con, and that was going to take yep. all of kind of our fun financials for traveling. And then that fell through with other people we were trying to make plans with, and blah, blah, blah. So Kansas all of a sudden was a, you know, a real thing. On the and, table, yeah. Yeah, we asked Jake again. He said, yeah, absolutely. You guys can crash with us again. So... Just, yeah, we, you know, play uh, ticket and right. play ticket and lots of food for them. We had some locals <laughs> that were, um, like, you know, Angel had said that he was considered going. Um, mm-hmm. We had James Hallett was considered going. Um, I think, like, just uh, Angel had ended up having some work, pri- uh, work and some other priorities he needed to take care of. And then James is, right. was also the same way. Like, he really wanted to get off, but he didn't have enough time. Um, so we, did, we, we ended up booking for Kansas. Um, and two two important ironies come out of this. One, there is a local qualifier just a couple of hours away from us that is announced after we've already paid for our plane ticket. Um, yep. So we're already locked in. There's a local qualifier. We're like, oh, really? That's that's crazy. <laughs> 
Same day. Yeah. The second I- ironic thing that happened is when we landed, we landed very early on Friday. There was a qualifier very close to there Friday night that we just didn't know about. Um, yep. <clears throat> but, you know, Cody Snodgrass did know about that qualifier, and he took Mono Ice to the qualifier went undefeated, uh, much like his day one uh, experience in at the Crystal Cup. Right. Um, but so so before that happened, let's talk about, so what was, what, what, when did we leave? We left on a Friday? Yeah, we left, we woke up at 3.30 a.m. Three, uh, well, some of us woke your, up. Well, we woke up, left your house at 3.30 a.m. Yeah, some of us were <laughs> already then, awake. Uh, yeah, you you never slept. Right. But then uh, we flew at like 6 o'clock or something, right. 6 a.m. Uh, got into Kansas around 9 a.m. their time, got picked up. Stayed up for a while, had a little bit of food. Then we crashed for yep. like an hour, and then we went to locals, like their locals at night again. Right. And so uh, <laughs> with, uh, you know, Zach's, Zach's been working a whole lot um, and hasn't had like a lot of time to be playing. And the times that we have tried to play, our locals haven't been firing. Yeah. So the local was actually <clears throat> a really good chance for him to get a, a taste of like what Mono Ice brought to the table um, because he hadn't been able to play an octagon, and there was just nobody locally playing Mono Ice. Um, right. Although we did try to play it right before we left, right? Were you yeah, on it yeah. as well? I can't um, remember if you were on it. Or, or it was just I decided oh, I, I was, I was on stick it. with okay. our monsters deck because okay. I just wanted to you know, get more practice on that before we you know switched off it. Oh no, you're but... on the Golbez. You're on the Golbez Archfiend. Um, oh, the Archfiend Mill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is a really cool deck and was actually very high in my consideration to take. Um, but anyway, so it's, it's a dog to mono ice though. So so the local the local practice was on uh, Friday night and. It's not. It's, it's no secret that we, we, we tend to not take our number one deck to the locals the night before. Mind you, um, many of the locals now also do that. Most of the locals yep. were playing decks that they were not playing and playing the next day. Which was not the case for the Petit Cup. And they actually told me during one of my rounds, they were like, oh, is I ever playing tomorrow? I'm like, mm, no. And they're like, yeah. So like after we saw you guys do that last time, we thought, that's pretty smart. We probably shouldn't play our decks that night. Right. So, <clears> so we played Mono Ice. Right um, I did miserable with it. Um, but mostly, I think, because I was having a miserable time. And I had to play you in the mirror match. And you won the die roll, and you just went, like, triple thought mage on turn one. And it was just that not... Happened. Yep. Yeah, so all my discards were, like, much worse. Then you went turn one vain, because that's all you could do to that's literally block three damage. And right. uh, I just party attacked through for right. as long as I could. Dulled them down with Genesis, eventually took the game. Yeah. Right. So, it, I, I didn't have a good time playing Ice. I knew it wasn't what I originally planned on playing. Uh, the biggest issue came from the fact that I had two decks that I was very heavily considered. I was going to either play the the version of Josh Goh's deck, or I was going to play Mono Lightning going into it, because I knew Mono Lightning had a really great ice matchup, and I expected ice to do very well, which it did. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that one thing that people will take away from this event is that Earth Wind won. Uh, I put three copies in the top eight, um, yep. including two in the finals. But that's not to take away how well Mono Ice really did at this event. Uh, right. crushing the other um, Earthwind deck, as well as <laughs> crushing you, or not crushing you, but beating you, um, and then very close to beating me um, in our semifinals. So I don't yeah. want to like I don't want to downplay how good that Mono Ice deck really was, um, or at least how good Cody was as a as a pilot for it. But mm-hmm. I f- I felt that <clears throat> that at least I at least I think that the matchup is close anyway. I'm not sure. But for Cody versus for us? for Cody versus our deck. But anyway, yeah. anyway, so I was so but I, I was really confident in the Mono Lightning deck. Um, but when they announced that there was going to be a local qualifier, Alfred uh, didn't have a deck. So I said, here you can take Serena, who's my wife was at the time playing Mono Lightning, doing very successful was very successful with it. And I said, you can play this Mono Lightning deck. Um, mm-hmm. Just don't change any of the cards because it, it is it is as it is like the best yeah. version of itself. Right. Uh, <clears throat> I don't consider myself a Mono Lightning player, uh, but I consulted with some of the best Mono Lightning players I know. Uh, mostly Josh, who who is a very good Mono Lightning player. Um, <clears throat> and we had grinded some games. And at one point, I was like 17-0 with it. So I said, like, Alfred, like, you're going to win the qualifier with this. Here's the deck. Right. And <laughs> he won the qualifier, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so that left me down to, I'm going to play this Wind Earth deck. And I think log beforehand, I think that you were just kind of kind of trust me with whatever I was going to play. Is that the idea? As long as we were playing some kind of Wind Earth X, whether it was three color monsters, <clears> some <throat> mill yeah. variant with like Uranger and Phoenix, or if it was what we ended up on, like the more solid uh, Earth Wind with maybe a splash of a color, something right. with that 
and either Dataluma or Heavy on Monsters, I was comfortable with. Okay, and so I was I was pretty certain that I was going to lean towards this uh, this Earth Wind deck, um, but you know, I, actually, you see the deck. Oh, this is this isn't our deck. This is actually have a uh, Air's deck deck up here. Uh, but if I were to actually go to my decks, pull it up real quick. <clears throat> It's not tricolor yellow cure. That sounds like what it would be. Um, so this is the deck. It has like Dotaluma, Walls, Estrolas, Urangers, but it also has Kobodroid Yin, uh, Banga Thief, Death Gazes, and Calbrinas. It was a it was a, a a deck that ended up being very similar to what I ended up running in Kansas, but it had the monsters. Um, because I leading up to Kansas, I tested a lot on monsters, and it's what I definitely was settled on playing. Uh, and I knew that Zach had some experience on monsters as well. Uh, we both love the monster deck. Um, okay. Back here in Opus Four, um, a lot of fun. yeah. The, I think the issue was is that the the matchups, at least in testing in the mirror matches back when we played it, were always very very grindy. Um, yep. And they're actually, you know, n having known that I knew Hunter Nance would show up on monsters, and I knew that Curtis was on monsters, and I knew that Adam was gonna be on monsters. Yeah. I I wasn't. I didn't want to skew my my deck to be good in the mirror. Like I didn't want. Psych like for a while, I had the Psychon Enforcers, which were great in my deck because I had Gladiator with Vikings, um, and then I had like Alexanders. But then I felt like I was, I was skewing it too much towards the mirror because those things, are, right, those cards right. are generally not very great against Ice. Like, like you can't like Psychon Enforcer their Buckaboo, <laughs> and like it, by the time you Psychon yeah. Enforcer their Jesper, they've already got their what their value out of it, and then <clears throat> most of them aren't going to use their Flan without having an activation up, so you can't even target their Flan without them getting value and just going and get another Flan. So right. I ended up showing the list to Josh. He said we're on this. I remember you asking what we're playing, and I'm just like, uh, we're on Earthwind now. And you're like, okay. <laughs> like I remember you just not even second guessing it. You're just like, all right. It was cool. I mean, I, like I told you, I'd been thinking the week leading up, like I wanted to play the monsters deck, but I was also a little concerned with if there was a lot of lightning because I had personally lost to it, even though maybe it is supposed to be a good matchup. It's a great matchup, uh, yeah. Uh, but then, that, that doesn't mean it's un, unlosable, obviously. Right, right. Uh, just get hasted out really quick or something. Right. But uh, and then also the mirror, I just it's like you said, it's grindy, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, you have to just hope that you have more summons than your opponent. And I just didn't want to have it, you know, my matchups to be based on that. So I was actually leaning something Dataluma Cactor or Turbo or whatever. So yeah. as soon as you said like, all right, Earth Wind, I have a good build of them. Like, sweet, that's perfect for me. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so what we what we did is I took. Um, you know, I, I messaged a few players about asking, kind of like, well, what do you guys think about Emperor? And the the basis of what I've, or the consensus of what I got back was like, well, it's just not better than Kafka. Having right. played the the Crystal Cup, and of course, you know, maybe this is some, you know, confirmation bias. I would say the Emperor did very well for me. Um, mm -hmm. I would not Definitely have won me some games. I would not have won. Yeah, I would not have won without it. Um, and it was the right call. Whether it's the right call moving forward, I couldn't tell you. I could tell you that it's much better in the mirror than you think it is. Um, it's actually very good in the mirror. It was very frustrating uh, when Aaron Wiseman had his down, uh, and I only won that match because he made the mistake of attacking with his. And when I knew that when I had my Emperor, it was very frustrating for all the other Earth players I played against. Um, mm -hmm. There's just not like a really easy way to kill it. Especially if someone curves out with a Star Sybil, searches up Camelot, thinking they're going to pop it next turn, and then you yeah. just go, you slam Emperor down. Yes. It's so disruptive. And that's one of the things I did quite a bit, actually, and I, and I did it even against the Mono Ice deck, is once they filled out their backups, I would then play the Emperor, yep. and then they would be locked down their backups. I think at one point I did that to Aaron, uh, I think maybe in game one, and he had like Star Sybil, Minor, like his backups were just like already getting ready to crack, and I played the Emperor. It kind of locked right. him out of that. It's also really great against Estola, um, being one of the best cards in the mirror. Um, so taking out, kind of being the mirror buster, I thought Emperor like served me really well. Um, that being said, I would have really enjoyed <laughs> to have a Cactor Searcher in some of my matchups, but I don't oh, absolutely. think that the value in the Cactor Searcher would outweigh my desire to you know have the Emperor. I agree. His ability. And there's certainly nothing against the possibility of playing both. I never, I never felt that I had too many dark cards. Maybe with the addition of one more dark card, that could be the case. Uh, and certainly, if you're playing water, it's a little easier to get away with these dark cards. Right, right. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, I wouldn't be opposed to adding Kefka to this deck, um, or adding Emperor to Josh Go's deck. Um, that's just my opinion. My my list right now uh, has changed quite a bit from this. I've only sent my updated list to two people um, who both are considering it for the SoCal Cup. So I'm not gonna post that list right now um 
But, you know, I I like our, our deck. I like our deck for the mirror match. I like our deck for mm -hmm. every matchup. Um, besides Nick's deck, which was just better in the mirror because I think Graviton plus a bunch of Earth summons is insane. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm not comfortable on the monster matchup, but I also don't think it's as bad as some of the other versions. For example, like the Rainbow Mill deck is probably a lot worse against the monsters than this deck is. Right. Um, I think the deck just rewards yeah. solid play, too. Like it if does. If you are a good player, you will do well with the deck because it has powerful interactions that aren't necessarily immediately recognized in the moment. Right. I wouldn't, uh, but I, you can get yourself out of some sticky situations with some of the interactions in the deck. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend you to take this to your locals if you have no experience on it. Um, it's just, it is a hard deck to play. Um, and... You, it just it, but it does leave way to make to outplay your opponents, and then although it's although it's hard deck to play, it also is a deck in which if you make no mistakes on it, it rewards you for ju just steam it steamrolls the opponent when they when they make a when they make a mistake, it just there's no catching back up. If they make right. a mistake in calculating Data Luma's power, if they make a mistake in calculating what you can do with your cactars, if they don't understand the power of uh, Simulafina. Um, if they don't understand the fact that, like, at any point you can mine her back into Stola, um, you or can... Or if they don't, like, re yeah, like, people weren't respecting when I had Layak out with a Cactor still active in a Dottaluma. Oh, yeah. Their math was completely <clears> off <throat> because I'd have a semi and this, so I'd, like, do some stuff with my backups. I'd pitch a card from hand to get yeah. an extra semi activation, ping, untap everything, then ping again, and it, oh, some blowouts. Really yeah, I, I feel the same with, uh, like, uh, Mog. Like, people underestimate, like, when you have a Mog open... Uh, like at any point, that means you have an Estrola in play, and they can't respond. Right. So they can respond to you cracking the Mog, but unless they they see you going to get the Estrola, if they know that you're going to get the Estrola, it's it's all but too late for them um, right. to even cast their summon. Which I did catch a, a couple people off guard. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so th that's what led us up to playing this Saturday. Um, Saturday comes around, um, and I think you took a round one loss, right? I took a round one loss to your finals opponent, Aaron Wiseman. Yep. Yeah, okay. He zodiac me, and I knew he had it. Took out three of my guys. Um, he actually misplayed because he he forgot I had Emperor, so he couldn't sacrifice his Gibran. Mm -hmm. So he took damage, not thinking he was going to. Went up to five. Uh, I took. I went up to like four or something. Then I played a wall, and I had like a summon backup, uh, like a summon to do stuff with. Okay. And then he went zodiac again. And, so the double zodiac. In, did, did you? And that, the second zodiac put him to six, and he swung out for game. Yep. Yeah. It yeah. was brutal. And then you ended up making a pretty good comeback. Um, yep, then I went 5-0 and in the next five rounds. And then the last round, yep. uh, so we lost, Sam and I lost to the same person in Swiss. Uh, yep, it was your only loss, correct? Corwin Atkins, yeah, playing uh, yep. water fire <laughs> standard units with uh, Rangers, it Gl burn, yeah. Yeah, Rangers, Gladiators, uh, Vikings. <laughs> it was a very unique deck. Um the card that was so good against me, I mean, so the the thing that this deck fears is things that, are, like, with haste. Um, yep. So things like Ranger are actually surprisingly good. Um, Especially with Gladiator Ranger was... Right, oof. that's actually what killed me. Um, and then Tela also allows it to where you can never use your Hecaton because they can just hold up their Tela. So we, <laughs> bo we, both, we both lost to the deck. That being said, I think that if we were both being honest, we had hoped that he beat the Water player... And for us to play him in the top eight, at least for yep. for me, uh, I felt like I couldn't lose that matchup again, knowing what he was playing. It was right. it's kind of one of those like it's really great in best of one scenarios, but in best mm -hmm. of three, like the element of surprise um, was definitely going to harm him a bit. I think. Yeah, like he he took me out with a Palum plus a Sage pump on his Ranger to have enough damage to like kill my Stola in combat. Like that, it was. Mm. <laughs> overextension but like i mean i won the game right but like things like that like all those interactions and knowing that palum could be coming uh would definitely change how i play against the deck uh, i think his spiciest inclusion though is the legend yuna from opus 2 yeah so when she attacks all characters other than light and dark that your opponent's control lose yep. all abilities this includes maria so any pumps are gone knight yep. would lose their buff like that Impor card <clears throat> frightened me important to note that uh it doesn't work with layak so if they attack you still get your layak trigger right um, right yep which I think is something that easily people people misinterpret. Um, he actually asked me about that during <clears> the game, and I explained to him how they yeah. stack up. He's like, "Oh, okay, thanks." And so, so that leads me to round seven, where I'm paired against Ben. Ben was my finals opponent, 
and the petite cup. Uh, Ben Mm -hmm. has a lot of sportsmanship. He has a great heart. Um, One of the most analytical, tactical players that we had played against. Um, He knew what deck I was playing. I knew what deck he was playing. We were very friendly before we went into the match. We talked about choices and and cards. Um, And I had even given him some suggestions about cards that were going to be very good against me. Um, Mm -hmm. Particularly, I don't think this deck wants to see Azimus. And I convinced him to up up his Azimus count. Um, our answer to Zemus is, of course, uh, Cactar, but if we don't draw it, then we're in a lot of trouble. Right. Um, so, you know, I get, when I got paired against Ben, I gotta say, I was actually very happy. Um, we're round seven, we're at table four. Uh, we're both at X and one, and most mm-hmm. of the X's, X and twos were gonna make it. And you got so, to play on stream, too, right? So, yeah, and so we were gonna play on stream, <clears throat> because, I guess, uh, Joe and Aaron were scheduled to play, um... On stream, but I guess you know uh, they didn't want their 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 winning into into the make the top sixteen to be aired is a, a lot of pressure or whatever. Um, so we ended up playing. So they ended up putting Ben and I on, and man, I was excited. I think Ben was excited. Mm-hmm. We were super stoked. Uh, he opened with turn one summoner. Uh, you guys can go back and watch the stream if you want. Look it up. It's a Square Enix presents on YouTube. Uh, but he opens up with turn one summoner, which is not a great start for Mono Lightning. Obviously, I just go back up, back up, back up, back up, etc. And basically, at no point do I play anything that he, that he is happy to El Cid, which is what I goal my goal is to do against uh, Mono Lightning. And he and he loses the match, and we shake hands, and we're all friendly, and everything goes on. Right. When they announce top sixteen, um, Ben makes seventeenth place, which was crushing, um, not just for Ben, but I think for a lot of us. Uh, <clears throat> myself, I I would have I wanted to play. I would want nothing more. I mean, look, I'm happy to get to play against Aaron in the finals, um, given the bracket. But I would have loved to play against Ben in the finals. Right. Um, it it would have been uh, that would have been like my dream scenario. Granted, I'd love to play against you in the finals, but I didn't get that. <laughs> we weren't we weren't on that side of the bracket for that to happen. Um. So yeah, so he gets announced seventh place. Uh, it was pretty soul crushing, um, to say the least. Especially because during the announcement, there was another Ben there. Yeah, and we so we heard Ben. We heard Benjamin we, we, Miller. We, we, we didn't yeah. realize it was Miller. We just heard Ben. We're like, oh yeah, we're all clapping. Like yeah, yeah we're, we're all very excited. Man. And that and was like in like tenth, from, tenth yeah, place not, or something. Like something's yeah, very 11. secure. Yeah. And and not to take away anything from Benjamin Miller, we were just not. You know, we thought it was the other person. <laughs> we were like, you know, who we yeah. talked to a lot in teams, whatever. So yeah, it was. Yeah. It was uh, so we, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for Ben. Uh, not just as someone who helps run Collector's Cast, but just as a player and a person, um, he handled it with like a lot of uh, a lot of grace. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we see him out there again. Uh, I hope, mm-hmm. I'm I'm hoping that he he's making the trip this weekend to some of those local qualifiers. Um, so I hope that we can test with him for Nats. That'd be great. Right. Um, so that was it. So we win. Uh, they announced uh, you were in ninth place. So thank God it was top sixteen. <laughs> make it in there uh we both made we both made it to the top cut um and i ask richard brady hey i'd like to know like when i should be heading home or should i go out can we go out and have free drinks and relax or when are these lists gonna be posted and he shows me his phone and he's literally uploading the photos of the deck list yeah. right then i said all right i guess we don't have time we gotta go back yeah. and test yeah um so we hop in the car and where's the first place we go Cinnamon delights. Cinnamon delights. <laughs> that's that's our thing. So we uh, immediately hit a Taco Bell, uh, and we get cinnamon delights because that's as tradition. Uh, when you do well in Kansas, you go and get cinnamon delights. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't even know if it's a Kansas thing. I think had I gotten cinnamon delights in Boston, um, I very well could have won the <laughs> the cup there. I and I, and I actually never mes- message Akimoto. I am wondering if he got some cinnamon delights or not. See, see, we're not saying it always works. We're just saying it doesn't not work. No, I mean, it always works. <laughs> I, I've never had it not work. Right. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that's some confirmation bias. But I've never had it not work. Um, I, You know, I told Adam Lane um, to go get Cinnamon Delights. I told him how important it was. I told him what they would offer him. I told him what Cinnamon Delights could do for him. Um, and he basically laughed me off and didn't get Cinnamon Delights. Well, joke's on you, Mr. Lane. <laughs> joke's on you. Um so yeah, so we go home. We get our cinnamon delights, of course, first, um, and we go home. And actually, hold on, we, we missed an important part of the story. I don't play Final Fantasy without a hat on. It's weird. 
I don't have like a receding hairline or anything. It's just I just feel unlucky about it, right? Not only did I leave my deck back here in Florida, I left my hat back here in Florida. It was it, it, listen. It was starting off to be a very bad trip. Um, I think that's actually an important note because not only did like a couple people, but I think close to a dozen people wrote me and said, "Hey, I have extra decks with me. I have extra cards. I have everything you can need. Whatever you need, I have." Um, yeah. Which is incredible. I mean, you have a hat, (laughs) but they didn't have a hat. Um, So we went, we went shopping for hats, right? Um, And we found some pretty funny ones that we ended up not going with uh, because they, because they would only fit on Zach's small head. I have like this giant melon head. (laughs) They would fit on my giant head. Um, But Jake was super nice and let me borrow his hat, and so that's how we got to there. So we go home. uh, We call up Devin, um, and Devin immediately agrees to come over and. uh, build some decks with us so how'd that go let's talk talk about that process a little bit we get back to jake's house and we start building these decks yep so we i i already had mono whites built from the previous night so i just edited it to make it into the versions that we were going to play against yep. or i was going to play against uh so we tested that matchup first and that did not go well <laughs> nope so i was playing mono ice and i just kept yep, steamrolling we, we them took over turns too right like we even switched and yeah. i think out of the two of us we only won once out of maybe six games yep uh, so we're like, all right, well, this isn't as good as we were expecting this to be. But, you know, the whole reason we picked the deck was, hey, it's solid against ice. Well, yeah, not every version. But right. anyway, then we tried your matchup. Yeah. So we built this, uh, my, the Nuck Tuck Hero of the South deck, the Mono Earth Splashing Water for Chuchulain, uh, one copy of Fairy, yep, three Minwoo. And what Garnet? Uh, and a Garnet and a Yuna yep. starter. So it was a super spicy looking list. I think I drew my first two hands and I was like, where's, where are the water cards? And I looked back at the list and it was mostly earth. And I was very confused. Yeah. Uh, Cause I figured it was just garnet with, you know, Titan and cockatrice and all that. Yep. And I'm like, Oh, okay. It's earth. So I started playing it like a mono earth deck. And then I drew, you know, my chaos to cast one steam rolled you. Yeah. No, it wasn't, Five games it was not close. Like yep. I would play one to two threats and be like, sure. You want to shant me next turn, play two more threats, go. And like, it was, like so, trying to Diablos through a, through cockatrices and titans and all that just did yep. not work. It was it was not looking good. So at this point, we decide that we're gonna go to none other than the Cheesecake Factory. Hey, this yep. is where you go to solve your life's problems. <laughs> <laughs> and so we go have a few drinks at the Cheesecake Factory and we have a good time. What do we say we spend like two hours there or so? We were there for at least two hours. Yeah. Yeah. And we come back and we say, and I I forget whose suggestion it was, but someone had suggested, and maybe it was. I think maybe it was like uh, Steph Curry whose suggestion is like you know you you never leave practice <laughs> and, until you make the last shot you always leave, make the last shot so you know I'm gonna play this matchup until I win and then we'll leave it on that right yep. so how many games do we play like three more maybe two or three more yeah. two or three more uh, I didn't well, there, re- there was one where you said this is the last one yeah and then I did something on like turn two and you're like you scooped you're like I can't deal with this and then we played one more real quick and went about the same <laughs> yeah so I lost that game as, as well. Um, and I wasn't feeling super good about the matchup. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm lucky to be friends with, you know, Ryan Solarski and Josh Gua and, and, and Chris Matiski and all these guys are, are, and Colin Harris, all these guys are testing this matchup for me online. Um, and they're not finding that big of a, a difficulty with it. They're fine. They're saying it's kind of even, it's kind of even, maybe you, you should be winning. You should be winning. Um, they had put in the wrong Cecil. Um, they switched <laughs> to the Cecil, so they're like, okay, the matchup got a lot harder, um, but you should be fine, don't stress it, you know, leverage your experience, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you guys aren't making me feel any better, I'm definitely gonna get wrecked. <laughs> okay. I conclude, and, and I'm wondering if you came to the same conclusion with your matchup, that, you know, if we lose, we lose. There was just... Uh, it was kind of, all right, it was a very bittersweet, like, I went into it thinking I was gonna lose, so I was just like, you know what, if it happens, I can't be mad because it's, you know, kind of what I expected. It, it, win, it's a oh game it's a game and someone's got to win and someone's got to lose right right and uh, something i told you which is important to remember when you're testing a lot with friends is eventually you start to get like a sense of how to play against the person more than you know the deck or the matchup very much so i think so i i before bed i was just like and i think we had a lot of disagreements on like what the right plays were too right like when right, i was right. when i was playing the, the ice deck you would you would say well you should do this and i said well no i think that like this is the right play and you would mm-hmm. say, like, well, I don't think he's going to see that play. And I'm like, well, we should test the per- perfect. So we were right. also testing with perfect information. Um, and see, but it was like the perfect play from a control perspective. Whereas, right, which is, uh, is kind of like how we both play. Aggressive. 
Right. right. We play a lot slower and more controlled, and we'll bleed you out more than we'll bash your head. I felt the so. same way. When I played against Nick, he played a lot more aggressive than when we were testing. And I think right, if, right. if he had played a little bit more controlling um, and made me be the aggressor, mm -hmm. you know, things would have gone differently. Um, like, even the ice matchup, like, he, game one, we played uh, in my top 16 against uh, Kyle DeGraff. De um, mm -hmm. It, I lost my first game. And I was like, man, this is just how it's going to go. Uh, it happened exactly how we did it, right? Like, he had a discard here and there. He played threats, and he got me. I lost my game one against Nick as well. And I thought, I thought, you know, hey, like, this is what we've practiced. This is what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I'm interested to know, like, what was your mentality right then? Because I, I had a very different mentality, which I'll talk about. Uh, but what was your mentality at that point? Uh, I started just kind of, you know, like, oh, joking around. Like, um, like, before the match, I said, hey, just in case you forgot your deck, here's a copy. And I, pro I showed him like I had his deck out and kind of laughed. So between games, I made some other kind of joke like, yeah, uh, is this about how it went for you last night or something like that? You know, trying to get him to talk about it. Yeah. And uh, we went, we, you know, sleeved up and he went aggressive. He tried to really like put pressure on me. And I saw that. I was like, all right, if I can stick any sort of wall, like wall itself or yeah. like Dotaluma, this game. Any, any wall figuratively or, or literal. Uh, yeah, uh, so I, I drew a Cactor early, played it, uh, like, just randomly, let him hit me for two. Next turn, second Cactor, Dotaluma. I'm like, alright, this game's over. <laughs> right. And from there, I just tried to play it slow, I built up a board, attacked one thing a turn, so he couldn't, you know, do anything, any dull shenanigans, get through a lot. Yeah. And I won that game. Third game, similar things, I uh, just filled up the board and made it so he couldn't get through, and I somehow squeezed it out, then I went and watched your match. Yeah, so my match, I don't remember exactly, um, and it's not because like I have just terrible memory. It's just that, you know when I see these 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 turn reports, I often don't remember like when people are like oh and then he attacked me with this on turn five. I was playing against this person in round five, round six. I usually right. don't really recall those things, and I think about taking a notebook and kind of writing these things down afterwards. Um, I don't know why this is, but my confidence is 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 usually pretty low going into a tournament. So I actually mm -hmm. don't see the reasoning behind bringing the notebook because it's like, well, when I, when people are going to hear about my O three drop, like, <laughs> why would I bring this? But I have to say that you know, I while I don't remember the match, I do remember like sp some things, like him being a lot more, like I said, like him being a lot more aggressive um, right. than we were play testing against. Um, and then we had we had like what what I thought was like a really awkward moment because he actually wrote me about this later and I didn't know this had happened. Um, there was a point where we treated a Ruban like a Hecaton. So I don't know if you were watching at this point because he said that it was during game three, uh, which would have been when you were watching. He said I think he said that right. it was near the end. Um, and I know that Craig was watching the the judge. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I guess what happened we both killed our Camelonauts. And obviously that seems like it'd be game changing. Um, so I mean, those things happen. It was awkward, um, but man, it, it it seemed like I just should, even without that, like I, I Camelot's never what won you the match in testing. It was always right. like the Cecils and the and the the cockatrices and the Titans. Like those cards are just so good in that mirror match. Mm -hmm. um, and I just felt like in game three, he just never drew a single Titan or cockatrice. Yeah, like when I, I saw just, his hand at one point, it was just four backups. Like right, he, I just I I have to say I got incredibly lucky. Um, I just yeah, he just drew very poorly. Which those things are going to happen, and, and you know I told myself okay. yeah I told myself like part of the mentality behind going into that match was that like you know I'm going to do the best I can and hope mm -hmm. that he stumbles, uh, and if he stumbles I'm going to capitalize on that and, and punish him for stumbling. And he did. And he stumbled. There was like one turn where he drew. I think he must have drawn his sixth backup because he discards Mobity and then passes. Um, and so, you know, I just, I, I just capitalized on the stumbling. Um, so then we, we make it, we make it to our top eight, right? Uh, yeah. I play my top eight on stream. If you want to watch that again, it's Square Enix uh, Presents on YouTube. <clears throat> um, there's, there's a point where I Hecaton to fight my opponent's Gordon, right? And mm -hmm. I wonder if a lot of people are watching are, are thinking like, why in the world would he hecaton there, right? I have to be honest and say that my opponent was shaking, right? I could tell that they were very nervous, um, and I could tell that I I, I thought that maybe there's a chance that he would value what what I considered to be the better play, um, and take that at face value. So when I hecaton his Gordon, he has summoner up, 
Um, and it's his, I think at the time, it's his only backup. <clears throat> uh, he and had two backups. Oh, two backups at the time? Yep. And so I'm thinking, like, and how many backups do I have? At least three at that point? You had, I think you were on three. With a ton uh, in my hand, on, I'm sure. I think you, you were on four, but you broke your archer, like, the same turn. To, okay. Or this so, is the following turn, sorry. The following turn, right. So I'm thinking, like, I think he's going to counter this with his summoner, and then from there, I don't lose this game. Um, and that's exactly what happened. He countered it. Um. I obviously I think that him letting the Gordon go is just the right play. Like mm -hmm. it's Gordon uh, again. Gordon did hold off Wall for like four attacks, but maybe that's only because he had to. Maybe he he played that way. Um, I don't know. I, I have to decide uh, if I re, if I went back and rewatched the game. Right. Um. But so tell me a little bit about your tops your top eight match because you went so... top eight. You're qualified. It's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, and I... and you're facing me in the semis, which is sweet, right? Or the right. quarterfinals, yeah, the semifinals, yeah. So I go into it not quite sure because we tested ice, but the ice version that I had to face in top sixteen had six copies of Mateus. Which okay, was yeah. Very interesting to work around. That I had to worry about attacking. Wall can't stop the experts. And one of the reasons we found the matchup so hard, right? Yeah, it's just, right. There's so many ways to kill Camelot with the right. other with the other Mateus. So then I went into it like, all right, I know he only has his three Glazia only. You know, <clears throat> great card. Uh, three Glazia, three Flan, two uh, um, board wipe. Right. Name. Yep. Zolera. So I was not as worried uh, about the summon line. Uh, and I could attack kind of freely when I get my Brave off of wall and I can do stuff with Dataluma. Like, I could play it a lot more normal, like for what we're supposed to do in the ice matchup. Yeah. But he has Flan. So I had to worry about Flans. And he had it turn two or three every game, I think, he had a Flan. And the first game, I dropped Emperor immediately after he went Flan, Search, Flan. I just went Emperor and basically invalidated his whole last turn. And from there, I was able to play three threats and just ride that to victory. So then I go into it, I win the first game, and I'm like, man, this is, you know, I, only one more game, and I'm in the next round. Yeah, and one more one more game, you're qualified for Nats. So the thing about Cody when he's playing, he is very methodical. He's also very gracious. So, like, if he goes to check your break zone, he hands his over and says, here, you can look at it while I'm doing this, you know, whatever. Um, not completely transparent. So he's very precise about his actions. Game two, he flipped that on its head. And he just played his hand basically as fast as it seemed like he could. He'd always keep maybe one or two cards back, but he would play a Thaumaturge. And, like, he'd overpay for Edward early, and he kind of figured out that you know, <clears> this <throat> card hurts me a lot more early. Right. Even though he's not running as much, it was enough to make me stumble, and then I, I lost game two very quickly. And so I'm like, okay. uh-oh. He flipped it. Uh, he, has, he found his discard. I just have to hope that doesn't happen again, have a lot more like game one. And game three, similar start, but, you know, it's at least somewhat of a game. Um, I think his turn one, or between his first two turns, though, he had four forwards on the field. Okay, similar to what he did against me, I believe. Yeah, and I was able to kill one, uh, be, you know, but I went up to three damage. Um, my blockers were gone. And there was a turn where I searched off Star Sybil. <laughs> passed, took some damage. And then I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know where in my brain this play that I did throughout a seven-round tournament, like almost every game, Camelot out of Star Sybil. It's half it's like ingrained, like, yeah. Yes, it's 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 the play, right? Yeah. You you get your three backups. You've got right. a semi. You've got <laughs> uh, Star Sybil. You got whatever else, and then you look. Crack, I, I, I I made I, this play I, even easier for you by taking Kefka out of the deck. Right, and then <laughs> I played two, and I played two. You know, you crack Star Sybil, put Cam in, search Chaos, use yeah. your two backups to play Chaos, pass, and then that's your curve. Yeah. I paid full cost by dulling Star Sybil to play Camelot. And when I did it... You saw the chaos in your deck? <clears throat> yes, I dulled three. Okay. I put Camelot on the field. And then I went to go discard my archer to pay for it. And it, as I was putting it to the break zone, I went, oh, no. And he, he just looked at me and was like, yeah, I, I saw. And it was at that point, when you play a card in the game, you do announce what the card is and you pay cost. I already yeah. put it on the field. I'm not taking it back. Yes, I didn't, you know, the arch was still in my hand, whatever, but I already, I'm already in paying costs. I'm not going to take that back. Not at this high level of a tournament. Like, I'm yeah. not going to do See, that. See, I, I guess I disagree. I think that, um, I think that you hadn't paid the cost and you should have taken it back. And I think Cody would have been fine with that. I think that if your opponent did that in a high level event, you'd be fine with it too. 
I think it's different than if like you had picked up your deck to go search and then right, you realize right. that you should have just put the can. Does yeah. that make sense? I understand that you yeah, didn't, you didn't want to do it, like, but just, there's a lot of pressure on you at the time. It's one of those things like I just I can't I feel like I can't do that. Like I don't want that to be the reason. Something, but but in, in any case, yeah. I discarded an extra card I didn't need to. I still played the chaos because I needed it for. Um, I think I had a backup. I was going to activate the next turn and I have a yeah. card in my hand. But now you've discarded uh, two extra cards from your hand. Yes. Yeah, so the next turn, you know, after shuffle, which yeah. you can argue that shuffles would have been different if like a different time, whatever. Sure. But I, he dulled my Camelot, yeah. uh, and my other forward I had on the field was dull. He froze both of them on the same turn, put me to six, <clears> and said pass, and I drew Shantoto. Now, he had five forwards on the field, four or five, mm-hmm. and maybe two cards in hand. And you had if two I less cards. If I could have Shantoto there, <clears throat> yeah. I could have wiped the field, and I had a, I still had Star Sybil. I could have drawn any forward, yeah. dropped it, still had Semi up, whatever. But because I discarded the extra two card, well, it was, yeah, two cards more than I needed to, I could not cast the Shantoto and at least make it a game. Right. And I was furious with myself, and yeah. I just had to like put in my headphones and just. But like, so and then that's, I, that's I drew, gonna I happen drew to some people. Shantoto, and then had a pass turn and lost the game. So rather than skip through that, let's actually go over that because I think that's gonna. I think that's gonna happen to some people. And you are really lucky, I gotta say, to have like that sort of memory. Like, uh, my games with Cody, I only remember his misplay. Um, he made, he made mm-hmm. two mistakes, which are going to happen over the course of the time. Uh, that's no slide on Cody. He's like probably one of the best players I've ever played against, and it's not even close. Uh, but, you know, people are going to make mistakes. I made, I certainly made them throughout the tournament, tons of them. Um, but I don't remember, like, generally the games like I do. I do. I don't remember the mindset necessarily. Uh, you seem to remember that. Talk to me about, like, that mindset. Like, how, how are you feeling, and how are you going to – and how is that going to affect your next match going into, like, uh, qualifying for Nats uh, locally here – or like, how do you recover? Like, what's what's the state of mind that lets you? Because because I gotta say, over the rest of the tournament, or not the rest of the tournament, I guess that was your exit from the tournament. But the rest of the day, you you were still in high spirits. You still had a good mood. You're still a good mood. You still had a good attitude towards everyone. You were still a, a great competitor. You were gracious in your defeat. Like, how do you get that way? Uh, you can't change the past. Uh, yeah. Once it happens, you can be mad about it. And I was frustrated for. I probably let myself stew for about forty five minutes. I I sat there and I. Um, as you know, I like to sort, to sort cards. It's therapeutic for me. Yeah. So I just kind of, I laid out all my, you know how you had the extra pile of cards in your yeah. box of like, these are me might play. I did. Yeah. I had the same thing. <clears throat> so I just put all of them back. Um, I kind of, you know, clean slate. Let's make some new decks and play some fun matches, gunsling or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So I just, I mean, I stewing about it and like making myself mad isn't going to help. So why right. should I feel bad about it? Like I, I shouldn't do that to myself. You know, I talked so. when I talked to Cody uh, in the last podcast and the the first part of this uh, podcast, I, I I asked him the same thing, you know, because he made a similar mistake and it cost him. And he kind of gave me the same the same answer is that you know, hey, you're you're gonna lose games, um, mm-hmm. and looking back over it, like things can't really you can't really fix that, right? Right, and I hope it was clear <laughs> to him too. Uh, if he's going back and listening to this, I was not mad at you at all. Uh, there was no ill feeling towards you or anybody else. I was completely being hard on myself for making such a stupid mistake. And I was just, I don't mind losing, but when it's my fault and very much under my control and I just did yeah. something dumb, that, uh, that's understandable. that makes me very angry. But right. you know what? I got over it. I uh, had some fun later that I'll talk about once we're done talking about the actual tournament. And sure. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I play against Cody next. Uh, uh, again, so keep in mind, I'm I'm currently dealing with like some terrible asthma problems, some breathing problems. <laughs> it has affects me way more than you think. So I actually just, you know, at one point during the game, I think I stopped Cody. Like, hold on, I need to take my inhaler. Like, <laughs> um, and he was really cool with it, but like, I don't really remember our match very much. Um, right. It was mostly unexciting up until the Dataluma moment, um, and then we, we we make it to the finals after after I beat Cody. Um, and then paired against Aaron Weisman, which I got to say, I was extremely happy to play against Aaron. He represent. he's one of Ben's best friends. He, yep. he did uh, Kansas City proud um, to make the finals. He had a really, uh, like, uh, a really interesting deck. Um, was really cool to play against. Uh, and he's just a great competitor. And then, 
you know, I we talked about being hungry, and I just said, hey, do you want to go next door and get lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so we went and got lunch together. It was great. We actually talked about our matchup. We talked about our, our games throughout the day. We, we, we kind of saw. I said, hey, look, you know, what's your – I said, what's your last name? Because uh, I, I remember uh, Aaron's last name at the time. Uh, he's a wise man, and he spelled it out for me. I was like, okay, just so you know, I'm going to type them. Let my, my buddies know so they can look at your deck list and give some pointers. He's like, oh, no, that's cool. <laughs> so <laughs> they talked about, like, oh, you need to prioritize. Watch out for Cecil. Watch out for Cecil, <clears throat> which ended up being a big deal. Well, I'm in the finals. Right. Um, you know, I I felt like the tournament uh, went well. Um, I mean, maybe that's another confirmation bias. Um, but, you know, it, again, that match was on stream. If you want to watch that, that's, again, Square Enix products. Um, yeah, so after the tournament, it, it it hit me, right? Like, I had won Kansas again. I didn't know what the odds were. Um but I got I, I knew that like I was gonna be able to tell my wife who had been cheering for me that I won. Like that was the coolest part of it. Right? <laughs> and then I don't remember if it was you, but so I think you had mentioned when we went to go do an interview with the uh, the RBA returners, um yeah. that that I got three buys. Yeah. And I was like, Holy crap, like that's huge, that's insane. That's awesome. Right. And then and I still hadn't gotten my trophy yet, or, or I just got my trophy. I hadn't really got to, to take take it in yet. Um and that was really cool too. I think I I don't know whether it was I was more excited to tell my wife that I won, although she was watching live. Um, she kept texting me like, "What's going on? Like, what's happening? Like, let me know when the game's over." When you were playing Cody off camera, yeah, and she was like, "Tell me, tell me, tell me." Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, um, I know she was talking with with, with James Lockwood. They were because uh, James was back here at, in uh, Orlando having a party watching us um, play. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was that or the three buys. I don't know which part was more exciting. Um, the binder was nice. Uh, the coolest thing was was that both you and Arby gave me a set of the sleeves that I wanted so bad. It was like the, the coolest thing I brought back. Uh, if you guys haven't seen those sleeves, I'll show Storm them to the camera. Storm Blood from Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. The newest expansion. Yeah, I think I'll, it has a red mage and a samurai. Yeah. It's just insane. Like these sleeves are just insane. Um, so I actually got two sets of these sleeves. Uh, I'm in love with them. I probably will never play with another set of sleeves ever again. They're from the <laughs> Masters um, Tournament. Uh, yep. So theoretically, you can only get them in Japan, um, or you could probably hit Ben's corner up and probably find them somewhere with him. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. Um, and then we got to do some. Uh, what about gunslinging? Did you get to gunsling at all? I didn't get to gunsling against the. Uh, you did do the wolves the, den though, and I and I, I want to talk about den. that too. And that and that's how you got your sleeves actually was the yes. wolves den. Okay, so talk so... about talk about the wolves den a little bit. So typically the wolves den is uh, well a before table. before you do do you have the list up that you could forward to me or no? Uh, I could find it slowly. I just won't be looking at the camera. I can I can talk while I look though. Okay, sure, go ahead. So normally when you go to the wolves den, what that means is you play the table of matches, and then the winner of each match moves up. And your goal is to get to the head of the table and stay there as long as possible. Yeah. So you're you're you know you're get people are thrown into your wolves den and you take them out. So they had fun challenges. Some of these challenges included most scions on the field at the same time, uh, most cadets on the field at the same time, most death penalties, which shout out to Jake. He had something like 25 death penalties he did in the amount of time they gave him. That's uh, insane. Yeah. It was insane, yeah. So I saw the list of them, and I picked one I wanted to do. And the one I saw was spend the most CP in one turn. Now, my first thought was, oh, I got this. I'm going to play Diablos, Valfor, Viking, dot deck. And just have some way to, you know, keep recycling these, recycling these, draw a bunch of cards, play them again, bounce them again, play them again, and just see how much CP I can get. Which isn't far from what was actually played before you went in, right? There was a Diablos, Bart style deck that was... You went triple Diablos, Bart, Connie Senna, and then did some other five-drop thing that untapped, maybe a Sura. Then he played a three-drop and archered like his own backup or something. Okay. He spent, so I think it was 30 30 something, CD right, that's what it seemed like, yeah. Play. So as I'm pulling this deck out, uh, Craig actually, shout out to Craig, because he, he wants to shout out about it. And Craig, the, the, the most awesome judge you've ever known, unless yeah. Ash is involved. <laughs> so I'm doing this, he's like, oh, why don't you try that infinite draw loop deck? I'm like, dude, I completely forgot about that. You're absolutely right. So I... Quick message, uh, Chris Matiski, because he's the one who, he's a uh, Shikadi, who made the video about the loop where he demonstrates it, uh, starting off with just an order on the field and then goes infinite. And uh, the challenge had 17 minutes left when I finished the deck. And I walked up to the table, 
and I had just told Jake about it, and he went out to smoke with uh, the guy I was about to play against, and I guess he told him what was about to happen. <laughs> so, Jake, <laughs> he's like, something about you're going to, like, draw out your whole deck in one turn. I'm like, who told you that? He's like, you can get around. I'm like, all right. So the guy who had the record was sitting next to me, right? Next, but across. So he yeah. was next to his opponent. My opponent was on three-color monsters, so he had a little time to set up. So I had a little time to set up. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole loop, but the general gist of it. Yeah, if, if if you want the loop, you should definitely check out uh, Matiski's yes. video. Um, you use yeah. Orator to give your other forwards jobs, yeah. and you give it. You start off by giving them all signs of the seventh dawn because that gives them haste when you have LSA out. And then you go through a sequence of playing Hope, giving Hope haste to untap Orator. Then you play Mog to draw cards. Then you use the Nono backup from Opus Two to untap your guys because you have three Moogles. You have your Artemisian, the Mog, and Nono. And then you play Ramza, which on chess backups, and then you eventually you turn Hope into a Sky Pirate, uh, and then mm -hmm. you play the new Ash, which untaps the Sky Pirate, and now you have a loop. Yep. So between Ash untapping Hope to untap Ramza, then Hope Ramza and Ramza itself, you can untap your No No and two Wind backups to infinitely untap your guys plus one because. Hope is also a Moogle through this process. Yep. So you can do any tap effect in the game infinitely, whether it be Amon to tap their team down. Uh, you can use Zemus to reanimate your lightning guys, like I brought back an Alcid to get rid of Walker uh, with an Unite in hand. Uh, you can do, if you had him in the deck, you could do something like uh, Bart or uh, Balthier. You can infinitely 2K their board. Right. Whatever you want. Um, but you can also draw your whole deck through this process, and then you play a bunch of stuff. You have Aerith for protection, whatever. So I did this with. 17 minutes left on my first try and got i we counted up to 57 cp but i could have just looped it uh you can just untap them and just not draw a card yeah. and just keep going and ended up winning the challenge and then that's how you got your uh sleeves yeah it was crazy because my opponent uh was trying to win the game that was his goal because he's trying to get most wins yeah. so he actually let me do it because he had a valfor in hand and he was going to have me draw my deck bounce me so i couldn't attack him yeah. and then uh mill me out that way but i stopped with four cards left in the deck and said combat because i gave my entire team i turned them all into basically barts they all had yeah. every job and they all haste and he's like oh uh valfor i'm like all right next turn er, played all my stuff again passed he didn't have a board wipe passed and then i <laughs> i actually misplayed i could have attacked for game but um i messed up and then he uh passed and i milled myself out nice but yeah nice. So at least very... your opponent also got what he wanted yeah, he's like, I want to see it, and he turns to the guys like, "Sorry, like I gotta see it happen." <laughs> so <laughs> the guy was like, "No." He's like, That's well, funny. I was thirty-seven CP, not enough. Yeah, I got. I gotta say, if if you happen to come to one of the, if you come to one of these Crystal Cups, or even if they have it at Nats, and you don't make day two, please jump into these Wolf Dens. They're like, they're yeah, really Wolf cool. And Gunslinger. The the price support is actually absurd usually. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, so much so that like if you start off like X. X2 and in Crystal Cup, consider Wolfden already. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, already, you already have it. You're, yeah. you're pretty much out of contention unless you want the experience, which I would always, you know, advocate for. Right, right. It's very good experience playing in a cup, even if you're in the 03 bracket. Right. Work your way up. Uh, yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. I, right. I do wish if I could have the whole. I don't have regrets in life, but like if I went back, I would have gunsling more. I yep. would have found time instead of I, maybe. Doing I did or something. I would just gunsling, gunsling, gunsling. Yeah, I did some gunslinger events. I had a ton of fun. Uh, won some prizes, uh, which I ended up I trading. Think, I think you made a friend with some respect too, because you played I, his own deck against him. I did. I, I played against the guy from Hobby, uh, Hobby Japan. I played his deck. I took a picture of it from him gunslinging Friday, and I played it against him. Uh, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. The top yeah. eight or top sixteen. Yep. It, it was so much fun. Um, I had such a good time. You had um, six light cards in hand. <laughs> at one point, I had six light cards in hand, which is, you know... And, of course, he had drawn his Cosmos, and I had not. Uh, so that just tells you how that game went. But I had a lot of fun. I ended up uh, getting, like, a, a foil um, Fat Chocobo, which I ended up trading for your uh, plushie that I ended up giving you so that you could have the mm -hmm. Chocobo plushie as well. I think that that was probably, like... The, it seemed like the, all right, it seemed like the prize that you were most interested in getting... Um, <laughs> so uh, when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, I gotta get that for Zach." And, and it was funny too because you uh, you had assumed it was for Madison, my, my I girlfriend. I did, yeah. And uh, I'm like, "Nah, man, I wanted that." <laughs> like, All yeah. right, well, here you go. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it tends to be a thing, actually. If you guys don't know this, that like the winner of these um, petite cups, um, 
often give their plushies to uh, give their plushies out. Uh, it started when um, Andy Carmona uh, gave my wife his plushie um, because mm-hmm. uh, I gracefully uh, um, forfeited to Jonathan Sorde in the final in the last match so that he could make right. top eight. Um, and then he ended up giving it to her, and then I ended up giving mine to uh, I believe Jake. Um, in Kansas, yep. and, and hopefully we keep this tradition going. I think it's a fun tradition. Yeah, um, I got rid of my lightning plus G for the teacup too. I traded it off to somebody. Yeah, so so it's just a it's just a really cool tradition. Um, so anyway, so so Sunday was fun. Uh, we ended up co- going back um, to Jake's place. We were going to go see Shakespeare in the park. Um, and I think mm-hmm. we we're just worn out, and we just we kind of sat on the stoop. Well, because we were like, just... oh, Shakespeare in the park, you know, no one wants to be outside that long. It's only going to be like an hour. And we find out it was three and a half hours. Like, mm, right. They're just hanging outside. Maybe we don't need it. Yeah. We, we did go get cin- Cinnamon Delights. Um, yep. As kind of a, a reward so for sugar. ourselves. Yeah, so much sugar. <laughs> um, and then we went back and played some more Final Fantasy. Um, yep. I, it's, a, it's a good game. I mean, I don't I don't get sick of it. Uh, I wish I brought my cube. I think Jake, uh, Jake and Rebecca would have both loved a cube. Um, that would have been fun, yeah. So maybe next time I'll bring, I'll bring the cube. And then we had a a wild trip back in which our planes were constantly delayed um, from Atlanta yep. over and over and over again. Um, yeah. So I, I guess that's our story, right? There's, there's not much else to tell, right? Yeah, I don't you think know. we left too much out. Um, no, yeah, I, I have to... I learned, I learned how to play UFS, which is yeah. a universal fighting system. That game is really sweet. Not sure if I'm going to get into it. Sorry, guys. I know. There but it's, it's still a cool game, right? Too, but, yeah. But it, it's, oh, it's very complicated, but very sweet. Yeah. Um, I have to say a huge shout-out to James uh, James Lockwood from Cards of Evil East. Um, he doesn't sponsor this podcast in any sort of way, um, but even so, we want to give him a shout-out because he does sponsor us as players. And even if he right. did, even if he didn't, uh, what he does for the community is amazing. Um, it, it meant a lot to both Zach and I um, to see that you guys were having like this viewing party to watch us and, and root for us. Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. Um, I want to show. on that same vein, real quick, uh, we actually had someone come up to us individually, actually, uh, yeah. two separate occasions, and someone told us that uh, he basically learned how to play the game well by listening to this podcast. It's really cool. Like. Wow. It was cool, and then he even took one step further and he said, I think if it weren't for your podcast, I wouldn't still be playing the game. Which means a lot. Which that, was, us. that was powerful. That was right. that was kind of insane. Yeah. Um, and I think there was a similar message. Like, it, it just it meant a lot. I think it meant a lot to us when you guys tell us those types of things uh, because we don't we don't really know, like, who's listening, who's not listening. Like, there's these YouTube analytics, but it doesn't tell us who's listening. It just tells us the number of people listening. We don't know if right. people are listening to the whole thing. Um, you know, I have to say... I, I really have to give not just a shout out to James, but like a shout out to, you know, everyone like in the SoCal area who messaged me to congratulate me. That was huge. Um, I must have had like four different people from Singapore message me and tell me they're, <laughs> they they were they like, I don't know what it is about Singapore, but they're like huge, like listeners to our podcast, which is so awesome. Like that makes <laughs> me more than happy. Uh, but, you know, like, so shout out to Singapore. We super appreciate you guys listening. Um, but yeah, when we get those types of messages, really cool. And when we got those messages in person, when we got to meet people that were talking about that, like, oh, we listened to your podcast, right, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. oh, that's just really cool. And it, and and even so, like, you would just get to hang out with other people that are doing the same thing as us. You know, we get to hang out with Adam and we get to hang out with Chris, you know, like. It's, it's just, actually the first time someone recognized the Choker Bros but didn't recognize me. So I was in the bathroom <laughs> line. We were, we were just talking about something and somehow it came up. Uh, he's like, oh, you're from Florida. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, the Choker Bros. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, and I just, he's like, oh, okay. No, that's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was cool that like our name was known even beyond like our actual names. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, as far as other shout outs for the Petit Cup, um, I, I don't think it could uh, go out enough to how thankful we are to Rebecca and to Jake. Um, yeah. There's not a lot to say. I mean, like we, we owe them literally everything. Um, uh, shout out to Madison and Serena. Who put up with us and allow us to make <laughs> to make the, these travel arrangements and then you know to hold down the house while we're gone. Um, huge shout out to you know I already shout out to Singapore, but like I, I think it like the the local player base here, uh, particularly James and Chad. Um, mm-hmm. Would you say we're like two of the most instrumental people and yeah, helping us get ready? A lot more dedicated recently. It's been great. Yeah. So shout out to James and Chad. Um, you and saw like, them in our I- Octagon podcast. Um, mm-hmm. both of them were extremely instrumental in us t- test, not just testing, but, uh, talking about the event. They had a lot of confidence in us, um, which means the world. 
Um, shout out to Alfred for winning his qualification. <laughs> um, I think that Alfred winning um, is a sigh of relief for for me when I found out he won uh, before I even knew that I was qualified because it meant that I wouldn't have to battle through Alfred. Um, right. So I can only imagine that's a that's a good thing for you as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So now uh, I gotta take on the the Miami boys. Yeah. Yeah, I have faith in you, though. I definitely have faith in you. I think that you guys will see Zach qualified um, within the, 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 the first, within the next two week, two or three weeks. Um, so you won't see us at Gen Con. At least that's the plan as of right now. You certainly, I, I, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm about 100% sure you won't see us at the SoCal Cup mm-hmm. this week. I do want to say that I, there are some players I'm rooting for. Uh, you know, if your name's not on this list, don't stress it. Uh, like I, I would love to see Aki, Akimoto do well. Um, my money's on Dan or Kyle uh, to do to do extremely well, um, and I definitely want to see Josh Gardner do well. Those are mm-hmm. like my four oh, super yeah, high picks. Going, that's right. Yes. Um, there's some other players. I think Thomas is Thomas has like a, a shot at like doing very very well. Um, mm. I, I think it really does. Like all these players. And the SoCal area are good, right? Um, right, right. And I don't necessarily think that they're going to be able to outplay each other because they all have this, like, a lot of experience playing the game. And Final Fantasy is not a game of bluffs. Um, mm-hmm. It's very hard to bluff. So it's it's it'll come down to their deck choices and their individual card choices. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait for it. Uh, that should be streamed too, right? It Yeah, it'll it definitely be streamed. I yeah. want to say that... Um, Richard is actually commentating, so I'm really looking forward oh, to that. Oh, really? Yeah. That'd be interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, cool. he's commentating because Akimoto wanted to play. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I can't blame him. I can't blame him, man. Playing in a Crystal Cup is unbelievably the fun. Yeah. So He's already got the three buys. He's already got the invite. <laughs> yeah. So if if you guys are watching this in the Tampa area, um, real quick, we are going to try playing on Friday nights at Cool Stuff. Um, if we don't have enough players to fire a tournament, I will be bringing the key. We will be playing Final Fantasy no matter what. We'll have a good time. Um, that's at Cool Stuff Games in Tampa. And then Sunday, we're going to keep playing at Sunshine Games. Um, mm-hmm. This Saturday, we have like a promo blowout where there's four packs per person to top um, top four. And then we're going to roll a dice per win. And every time you roll that dice, is a four-sided dice. Whatever, whatever die you roll on is how – like if you roll a four, you get four promos in addition. For every mm-hmm. win. So it's actually very nuts. Um, right. And then I think in two weeks, we actually have a local qualifier at Sunshine Games. Right? Yes. So, and I imagine that we will have a qualifier in Wave 2 at Cool Stuff. That's not confirmed. I have no sources. But I imagine that, um, you know, Cool Stuff is, is going to fight for that. So we'll, we'll have two qualifiers here locally. If you're playing in the Tampa area, please reach out to us. Uh, we want to see this community grow. Um if you're not from the Tampa area and you're listening to this, let us know what you do to help grow your community, um, and we'll see if maybe we can implement that here. Right. Yeah. Is there anything mm-hmm. else that I'm missing? Uh, I think that was pretty comprehensive. I think we're cool. So we ended up just about an hour. Um, hopefully, we didn't bore you guys. Um, <laughs> look, this this podcast was um, originally aimed to be kind of like a cell, uh, like a cell, uh, like a like a um, was it when we were twentieth podcast Something like that yeah if you if you don't if you don't count them in order because we do like part ones part two special editions yeah yeah i don't think the numbers matter but we were planning on doing something special for this one um i'm more excited that we won so look <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll do we'll do that one next week uh look look forward to the podcast for next week um we'll do some sort of giveaway i don't i'm not sure what it is but it'll be awesome um and so is that all we're not missing anything Ah, I think we're all set. All right, cool. So uh, for the Chuck Bros, I'm Sam Riley. And I'm Zach Burrell. And we'll catch you guys later. See you.